Uh, also, I'd like your opinion on whether we take this guy or not. Uh, line two, Darren in uh, uh, Massachusetts. Hi. Hello, Darren, you're on. Hey, um, how's it going, Russell? How's it going, Martin? Pretty Great good. Going well. Great to be on. Uh, so, recently I had a discussion with my father, and um, we, it, first it started out as a political discussion. Um, something having to do, it usually starts out with, like, like, I'm black, so it usually starts out with a racial discussion. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so it starts out, you know, how he says, oh, well, yeah, the white people are taking away our civil, our civil liberties and all that. And then it goes into a religious reference by saying they're doing a, mis, a misrepresentation of Christianity. And then it's just like, okay, well, I'll let that one slide for a little bit because uh, I'm atheist. And so then he'll keep going on and then, you know, say something else, and then he'll go even more further back into the... In, in, to the past of slavery, mm -hmm. and then he'll start talking more about race, and then so, um, it, uh, you know, then I let, let, let me get this straight. Uh, you're a white guy, and your friend is uh, is a person of color, or no? I'm black. You're black. Yeah, I'm okay. Said, yeah. Sorry. I'm talking about my father. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what? Got is, it. Okay. So what's the what's the <laughs> conflict that you're you're like specifically that you want to ask us about? Well, it get, when it gets into sla when it gets into slavery, that's when I basically say to my father, you know, like, well, here you are talking about slavery, uh -huh. and you know, you're, you know, the God that you worship, him being a Christian, mm -hmm. the God that you worship is an endorser of slavery. Mm -hmm. So then I show him Exodus 21. Mm -hmm. But here's the argument that I don't think has ever been on the atheist experience. I've watched your show for years. Um, is you know usually uh, he'll he'll point to that, and I showed him Exodus twenty one, and he says that's what that's the wickedness of man. That's not the wickedness of God. God created man. Wait, so stuff in the you Bible know. is just man made? Is that yeah, what you're saying? no, I think it's pretty clear that these are you know these all of these laws having to do <coughs> with how you treat your slave. All this comes uh, pretty much. There's very little in the Old Testament <laughs> that didn't come directly out of the Big G's mouth, right? Uh, you know, th these were his laws. This is what you do. These are the rules. Follow it. Right. So, yeah, if he's saying, no, 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 that's just the wickedness of man, I think he's specifically just ignoring, not even, I mean, just not the, the, the meta text, not subtext of, of the. Uh, I mean, in reality, scripture. of course, it is right. all the wickedness of man. Well, the sure, whole Bible yeah. is. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but, you know, you can't, you can't take like, specific edicts from the Lord that are presented in, in the Old Testament and say, oh, that's not the Lord saying that when he is. So. Right. Um, well, I think that well, is. Thing, <coughs> well, I'm sorry. I was I'm just going to say what you're pointing. What you're pointing it to is. I, I this is something that is continually whittling away. I think at Christian belief as any sort of a, a valid, any kind of valid claims that could be made that there is a that there is a source of morality here that is of benefit to humanity. Because every time that you point to some kind of something in the Bible that's clearly morally reprehensible, clearly inhumane. <coughs> Uh, you hear these kinds of excuses, and what what you're seeing is, you know, this is all the kind of post-enlightenment secular humanistic thinking that Christians, modern Christians, understand. They have to shoehorn this, and they have to kind of recontextualize the Bible now to make some. No, 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 no. That we were always this. It was never about discrimination. It was never about really supporting this sort of thing. You hear a lot of tortuous arguments about how. No, no, this wasn't really slavery. It was just sort of like a kind of indentured servitude, and you know, you could still, and it, and it was, and it was still about. You know, they they try to make it more humane, and it's because again, you can. I think they really do understand deep down inside. No, you can't just look. You can't just plop this book on the table, this holy Bible, down and say this is the infallible moral authority to follow. This gets right. everything right because it clearly does not. And so the fact that they kind of have to do all of this uh, is, is a bit of a, maybe just a, an acknowledgement of the inf moral inferiority of their scripture. And they can't come right out and just say that. They have to you know, right. structure it a little differently. So, yeah. so that's what you're encountering, I think. Right. But uh, see, I, I then, uh, later, I then, um, then kind of just confirmed and said, 
All right, well, I'll give you that. But even if you know it, it says it doesn't say uh, specifically the Lord is endorsing it or it's not referencing the Lord at all, I mean, it doesn't make any of the any of the other atrocities he's committed in the Bible him less credible to be worthy worth. I mean, or to be worship worthy. Uh, because, uh, you know, but then, like, I then, you know, it then ate away at me. And then I started, you know, searching for more and more uh, Bible verses that could possibly link it so that, you know, basically I could show it to him, you know, another time if he ends up, if he ends up bringing it up again. And I did. I found Deuteronomy 2010-14, which basically is Deuteronomy is the law of the Lord. And... Mm -hmm how it explains that the Lord spoke through Moses to tell him to go into a town, make a peace offering, peace, and if they take the peace offering, enslave them. Basically, that shows that God is endorsing slavery. So if Exodus 10, 21 didn't work, mm -hmm. then if they're looking for an actual reference to the Lord, then just show them Deuteronomy 20 hey, and um, if you want a really solid argument for the biblical view of slavery, uh, there's an essay that I always like to toss around. Um, this is by a fellow named Thornton Stringfellow, uh, writing in 1856. It's an essay called Scriptural and Statistical Views in Favor of Slavery. Um, now, th this was a reverend in 1856 who, uh, you know, this is pre-Civil War, mm -hmm. uh, and he yeah. was an anti-abolitionist who was arguing uh, against the freeing of the slaves. And he lays out this very, very scriptural case with lots of Bible verses in, <laughs> in great detail, saying, you see, you know, God uh -huh. told Abraham to take these slaves, and, uh -huh. uh, and you know, he yeah. lists all the Bible verses. So, so I would recommend checking that out, because yeah. that's what one a, of my favorite examples. <laughs> what a difference 150 years makes, right? Right. Yeah. What is that? What is that called again? Scriptural and statistical views in favor of slavery. Scriptural. I'm sorry. You, you gotta say that one more time. Scriptural and statistical views in favor of slavery. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, I don't know if this is the final case. Uh, I mean, you know, if this is like a knockdown case, because mm -hmm. you know, if you're if your dad can argue that even the Bible is the work of sinful man, certainly he's not going to take this guy seriously. But, mm -hmm. uh, but he may have some other verses that you can use. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just like arguing with my, with my is also kind of a different, different type of thing because he, like when I'm talking, and I don't necessarily get what I'm, get what I'm saying across fully, and so then I have to hear him rant for another five minutes, and then I have to talk for another two. <laughs> right. So yeah. It kind of yeah. ends up happening like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then, then there was, like, a, something he showed me that had to do with pseudoscience. And, you know, obviously what Russell said, it's basically intellectual bullshit right. um, mm -hmm. mixed with one. Um, the, the, thing, uh, the main thing is, is if, you know, if he's going to be reading off all these things to me saying that, you know, there's a design in the genetic, and then, well, first of all, there has to be a Nobel Peace Prize to be had, you know, for the person who discovered it. Science is about discovery, not something that you already know, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, you know, then, then, you know, then, you know, later I saw down this uh, uh, document that he gave me to read that it says, learn how to refute atheism. And then I told him, and he's like, do you see that right there? And I said, you can't refute atheism. He's like, you want to make a bet? interrupted me again. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it's a position. It's not an idea. You don't refute a position. Position is just, you, you simply believe mm -hmm. in no God. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, we don't assume, right. but then he assumes that our standpoint is that we assert that God doesn't exist. And I said, all, there's all different kinds of atheists. Mm -hmm. I didn't assert during any religious discussion at all that God doesn't exist. I just, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know. Do or you, you like don't do. believe based, uh, based but because the, the, it has not been proved to you, and that's right. all you. And that's really all. That's that's all you need. Um, you know that yeah. atheism is a response to theistic claims, at at its right. core, at its core. It can. You know, a person who is an atheist can, above and beyond that, have ideas about the concept right. of God, about other concepts, about other philo philosophical ideas, and these. Mm can be informed by their atheism. Right. So that, that is true. 
But if you want right. to get right, if you just want to get to the nitty gritty, um, atheism itself just a response to theistic claims. And so, if someone says, "I make this claim," and you say, "I don't believe you," and, and they say, "Why not?" and they say, "Because I do not believe you have proven your case," etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, there's nothing there that I am saying that they can refute. The only way they can refute what I am saying is to meet that burden of proof that I'm that I, I told them that they have not met. But that's that's as far as it needs to go. I am not asserting a positive claim myself. I could. Now, if I were to go on and say, well, no, nothing that could ever possibly be called a god could possibly exist, then now I have now put, my, I've put myself in a position where I, I have made a positive claim that I, for which I bear the burden. But it's not necessary to do that, you know, to, 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 to take the atheist position and to be able to defend it rationally. Right. And, uh, you know, and then um, when it went on from there, uh, there was something else that he said. Uh, basically, if I were to tell him to prove something to me, because mm -hmm. like, he actually made an assertion. He made the assertion that, you know, God created us because, you know, then it got into the pseudoscience talk, but then, you know, he made the assertion that God created us. And I said, okay, well, can you demonstrate that God created us? You know, and then he said, and then he points to the Bible and then reads Adam and Eve, the Genesis 1 through 3, like Adam and Eve, and I'm like, okay, first of all, that's the same thing you just asserted. I'm not looking for an assertion on, t on top of an assertion. I'm looking for actual evidence. You know, so then it just becomes in a circular argument. Yeah, the God Bible is not the, the Bible isn't the evidence for the claim. The Bible is the claim. Right. Yeah, and the evidence right. is something else. Right. Right. I, I mean, your your dad is reading the Bible with the assumption that uh, being in the Bible somehow makes it authoritative. And I would just say that like. Uh, you know, you quoting the you quoting the Bible on that has no more impact than me quoting Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yes, the Star Trek rule. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And that that's where, so this, so this is where a lot of arguments between uh, Christians and atheists just end up. You talk past each other because you're coming from different premises, you know, and uh, and, and and it can often be baffling to the Christian. And they're like, oh wait, because you know, they're they're taking these as as foundational truths and as, as right. premises and that, that are self-evident. That self may be the not. conversation that you, may, that you need to get to yeah. and change the subject off of slavery and say, I'm sorry, but I do not accept the Bible as authoritative. I don't see right. it yeah. as any not, particular more insights than any other book. Yeah, I just don't accept it as this a priori you know, bundle of truth that's not to be questioned. And, you know, yeah, so and, uh, and not to mention all the other things like, you know, the, the rape, the rape condoning as well. Yeah. I mean, de yeah, the, de yeah. the Deuteronomy verse condones slavery along with rape, yeah. along with right. murder. 36,000 so, Midianite all, women. Yeah, and I mean, there, there are different ways you can go when discussing the Bible. Uh, the problem with uh, picking this or that example from the Bible is that... Uh, you know, we've talked about slavery and we've talked about rape, but Christians are really good at tying themselves in knots over this idea that anything the Bible says is automatically mm -hmm. uh, correct. And so if, uh, you know, if the Bible seems to be justifying slavery, then we just must not understand the, the context. That's a popular mm -hmm. word. Yeah. Um, right. and, and so they'll make up all kinds of justifications, just like, uh, you know, a Star Trek fan who mm -hmm. discovers uh, an inconsistency between two episodes. Uh, yeah. Would similarly, you know, make up all sorts of, you know, invent all sorts of wacky explanations that why, you know, oh yeah, tachyons can really do that or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So, which is why some of the time when I uh, discuss the Bible, I prefer to jump outside the entire system and not talk about what's in the Bible, but just say I have no particular reason to accept the Bible as true in general. Mm -hmm. So you start right. from this, so it's like that's the square one you start from, and then you right. can get on with like actual content, actual moral edicts that the Bible makes, things like that. But you got to kind of start yeah. from there first, and then. But, but then, then anyway, yeah, the being, being this, uh, the being African American, <clears throat> you know, it has this like sort of effect on me where it's like he talks about the, mm -hmm. you know how slavery is bad and everything, and then it's just like you know our people went through the same thing is what you know the, mm -hmm. the bible is basically saying and it's like i don't know how the hell you can still read it yeah. you know and it's, and it's like that's why it bothers me because i actually care for mm -hmm. right you know 
And it, but, it, but at the same time, it's just, you know. Yeah. And, I, and it I, just I, means it's one rule for the chosen people. And, and, and for, you know, you have the Bible starting, you know, there's the whole story of you know, the, uh, the Hebrews being held in bondage for all these centuries in Egypt and what have you. But, but then, mm -hmm. you know, once they're, once they're back home, it's like, here are all the rules under which you can own another human being. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Okay. Well, but, uh, uh, yeah, good luck with those discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, everything you gave me was pretty helpful. Definitely. We appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Yep. No problem. All right. Bye.